Hello, thank you for your interest in our final presentation for MSI 421, a course that focuses on the strategic management of technology. Our group, comprised of Avidesh Pandey, Charles Tan, Daniel Andrews, Elizabeth Zhu, Jameson Cox, and Sherry Jacob, spent the term working with Cisco on researching and highlighting market opportunities for the company's building of the future technology. Our project sponsor was Paul Howard, Cisco's Director of Strategic Initiatives. We're excited to share our results with you today. We will start off our presentation by looking at the features in various buildings where smart technology can be implemented. Starting with the home, alarm systems can interact with sensors around the house to retrieve information. Based on these sensors, the alarm system can arm or disarm itself accordingly. For instance, the alarm system will automatically be armed once sensors within a room detect that the occupants are asleep and will be disarmed once they get out of bed. Additionally, floor and wall sensors will be able to detect impact levels. An unusual impact with a wall or floor can be caused by a person falling. Upon detecting the fall, the building would be able to dispatch medical help in a timely manner. This is especially useful if the person cannot move as a result of the fall and is unable to seek help. Reduction of energy usage will be ever more important in the future. Gamification can be applied to help reduce a home's utility consumption. Display panels in the bathroom will show the home's power and water usage for the month. For instance, if the home has had a run of several months in the top 10% of utility savers, this will earn them credits on their utility usage and discounts at environmentally friendly partners. Using social networking, the building will also periodically announce the top utility savers and perhaps also the worst. A mobile application keeps track of the contents of a user's closet. The user can interact with the application to receive recommendations for their clothing attire based on the events on their calendar as well as the weather. This application will be constantly updated based on the items in the user's closet and the events synced into the calendar on their mobile device. If a person with a contagious disease attempts to enter a building, sensors can detect the disease. The building will advise the person to go home to recover. Applications of this can minimize the spread of epidemics such as SARS or swine flu. For secure buildings, a facial recognition system will grant access to authorized employees automatically without the use of RFID cards. This technology can be expanded to the whole building for intruder detection, which will immediately alert security personnel about unidentified persons for further speculation. The same equipment can be used for several other applications. For elevators, scheduling can be improved by using data about the users. When an employee is entering or leaving the office, the elevator will be notified a few minutes in advance so that it opens as soon as the person walks towards it. The user's calendar information will be synchronized with the system so the elevator can take the passenger to the desired floor without requiring them to press any buttons. For instance, in a crowded elevator, the elevator will know beforehand with great accuracy which floor each person is going to. Knowing how many people are in a building at any given time is useful for a multitude of purposes. One example would be in the case of a fire. Fire crews can determine how many people are left in a building and where they are so they can be rescued efficiently. This information can also be used for other purposes. For example, if the system detects a large number of people on the fourth floor of a building, it can send an idle elevator to the fourth floor since there's a higher chance that someone there will need it. The evacuation processes of a building would involve being aware of the areas inside the building that are unavailable to be used as exit routes and dynamically redirect occupants. This would allow a high volume of individuals in a big building to be evacuated safely during an unanticipated emergency. In terms of a building's HVAC systems, the building's piping and ventilation systems are checked using sensors and building maintenance is alerted when the health of any component begins to slip. 
In addition, the building can connect the HVAC system with professional calendars to optimize its efficiency. For example, meeting rooms are often booked electronically using tools such as Outlook. If the building is connected and can gather this information, it can turn on the HVAC system before the start of a meeting to ensure that it's at the optimal temperature for the meeting start time. Bathrooms will consist of sensors that can measure air quality and detect unwanted materials such as dust and dirt. In addition, there will be sensors that capture the vitals of the users in the washroom so they can receive a private, real-time report of their health status. Building maintenance staff can interact with a mobile or web application that displays the measured cleanliness of certain locations of a building based on the data gathered from the sensors. Users have the option to subscribe to notifications that alert them when the measured cleanliness level has dropped below a configured threshold. In a greenhouse, an online greenhouse management system can be implemented that has the ability to track and update the inventory and determine the amount of spoiled plants and whether there is an increase or decrease in the plant yields. The same technology can be used in the context of farms. A monitoring system can be built to determine the pest levels within the greenhouse. It'll use the soil nutrition levels to determine the health of each plant and for commercial greenhouses, it could continuously determine whether the plants meet the required standards to be sold to wholesalers and retailers. Inside a fitness center, a sensor will be attached to a piece of equipment to determine its location and whether it is currently in use. A member can use a map terminal or a mobile application to locate desired equipment and determine its availability. This is especially useful for small portable equipment such as weights that are hard to find in a large gym. A mobile application that acts as a virtual trainer will analyze and alert the user on which workout they should do with the suggested equipment. The application can ensure that the equipment is utilized correctly and exercises are performed using the correct posture with the use of a camera. While the user is working out, it can collect statistics from the equipment sensors that can be used to update the user's fitness plan. Building of the future technology can have substantial impacts on the sporting industry. Here are a few examples from the world of golf. A system consisting of a camera that observes the player will be able to provide vocal and visual feedback to the user that allows them to correct their form. Embedded sensors within the golf balls can allow for an application used by players to track their performance. These sensors would be able to track the distance, speed, and location of the balls. Golf balls often get lost on courses and are difficult to find. These same sensors would allow players to retrieve all of their golf balls. The location of the ball would be relayed to a mobile application or the golf cart that the player is using thereby making it easier for players to find their balls. Stadiums can determine waiting times for busy locations such as food booths and washrooms and can inform the people in the stadium. Users can access this information using a mobile application that displays the lineup length and approximate waiting times. In order to eliminate or greatly reduce lineups at the cashier counter, sensors and shopping carts will detect which items are in the cart and the quantity of those items in order to automatically calculate the price to be charged to that person. A mobile application will allow a user to interact with the store's shelves to receive information about any markdowns on the items on the user's grocery list. The mobile application can also be integrated with the user's fridge at home. Pushing this idea further, it would be possible for shoppers to walk right out of the store with their cart. The idea behind this is that the cart will be able to charge the shopper remotely as soon as the shopper exits the store. A mobile application will let the user record their grocery list, and through communication with the grocery store, it will be able to let the user know where the item is located within the store. It can give you step-by-step -step directions similar to a GPS. This is especially beneficial at large grocery stores. A 
mobile application will provide information regarding the number of slots available in parking lots and the rate for a parking spot. Upon entering the parking lot, the user will receive automated directions to available slots. After parking, the application also records where the vehicle was parked so that the user can be guided back to the parking spot in case they forget where they park. The mobile application will also work with parking lots that have a reservation system by allowing the user to place bookings. The parking lot system will then block open parking spaces for cars that have booked the space in advance. The alert systems of multiple buildings will be unified by grouping buildings into alert networks based on proximity. Users can subscribe to alert networks to receive notifications and to be able to trigger alerts. A mobile application displays multiple panic buttons on its user interface. For instance, at a school, an authorized individual can enter a confirmation code to initiate the panic button within an application on their phone that communicates with the particular alert network. This will automatically inform 911 with the details of the emergency based on the panic button press. The panic button can be used to inform people within the building as well as buildings in the area of an intruder attack. When a user enters a shopping mall, they'll be able to enter into an application what item they're looking for. The app would then interact with the stores and inventory systems within the mall to determine which stores have that item, and then an in-mall navigational system would direct you to those stores. The application would also provide information on availabilities with respect to size, color, style, etc., and determine deals or discounts on related items. In addition, the user can build a central profile that can interact with any retailer's information system to match the items in their closet with what is available at the store. Users can also have the option to set up a budget to prevent overspending. Shoppers will also be able to get information regarding in-building traffic and directions. From the perspective of a store owner, the system can be used to track the number of people that enter their store. The store owners can use that information to find out how much traffic they received in their store in order to analyze statistics such as conversion rates. This data can then be used to devise new sales strategies. In hospitals, as a patient enters, sensors will acquire information about the patient and measurements will immediately be performed. All medical devices will automatically send their data to be added to the patient's record, eliminating data entry errors. An electronic wristband will track the location of the patient and electronic tags attached to medical devices will allow hospital staff to quickly locate these devices. A patient's vitals, location, and a summary of their medical history can be viewed remotely by close relatives and hospital staff for improved monitoring. Vehicles can interact with traffic lights to increase traffic efficiency. For example, when the traffic light detects that there are no more cars in the direction of the green light, the light can change to allow the other direction to go. In addition, individuals with upcoming emergencies such as pregnancies can subscribe to a premium service for the traffic light to switch in their favor for maximum efficiency. Obviously, this is taking into account traffic and road conditions. Diagnostic sensors will be placed on roads and other infrastructure in order to determine when the need for maintenance arises. Alternatively, the system can utilize high-quality satellite imagery together with machine vision to detect cracks on the road or infrastructure. A subscription-based notification service will allow users to receive notifications when the measured health of the road or infrastructure drops below a configured threshold. Specifically towards roads, roads will also have the capability to measure the slipperiness of the road and will proactively warn oncoming traffic. Now you may be asking yourselves, where does Cisco go from here? Our team has addressed this question by developing a preliminary transition plan that touches on the various areas that Cisco will need to do further research on in order for smart building technology to be implemented.
The first area that will need more analysis is privacy. With smart building technology comes information sharing, and with information sharing comes privacy concerns. So this is definitely a critical area that will need to be addressed. During our own research, we noted that many have suggested that it is important for users to have the flexibility to choose whether they'd like to receive the benefits of the technology at the expense of some bits of their personal information or not. With the high volume usage of sensors that smart building technology would require, it's important to ensure that there are no negative repercussions on human beings or the environment. It's a well-known fact that some magnetic fields can lead to cancer and other related illnesses, so it will be important to address these issues during implementation. As many critical functionalities will be operated through smart building technology, it'll be necessary to develop contingency measures in case of power failures. An example would be manual overrides. However, this is an area where smart technology itself can help the situation. This can be done through a smart power management system that detects when maintenance may be required so that failures can be prevented. Another area to be researched is the security and authentication of information being provided to the system by individuals. These systems will be performing critical functions and can lead to terrible situations if the wrong information is provided. For example, take a scenario in which a building is prescribing medication based on a person's health readings. The prescription needs to be secure or else someone may be able to hack into the system and prescribe wrong medication, raising health risks for users. Research will need to be done into the value of data. Our own research has shown that people will only start to adopt this technology once they see tangible benefits. A source of these benefits is data. The information retrieved and analyzed by smart systems will definitely be of use to some person or organization in the world if mined correctly. To address this, Cisco will need to determine the answers to three key questions. What data will smart building technology provide? Where does the value of this data lie? And how can that value be leveraged? The concept of smart building technology involves communication between thousands of devices and systems. In order for the transmission of all this data to occur, there have to be established standards and protocols governing the communication. Cisco will need to look at the technical details for implementing these standards. A useful way to begin collaboration on these standards would be to create a consortium that looks at the standardization of communication protocols between devices. In terms of the technical implementation details, it's important to note that the technology should be designed according to different stakeholder needs. In order to gain a practical sense of how this technology would work, our team recommends that Cisco pick one of the ideas mentioned in our report and prototype it. This would involve going through the entire system's development lifecycle, emphasizing the system's design phase. The biggest challenge that our team foresees in the implementation of smart building technology is the willingness of people in buildings to use the technology. Some smart building technology has been around for years but has never been implemented because building residents are reluctant to do so. Research will need to be done on how to achieve the behavioral changes required to increase the commitment of people to smart building technology. An example of a way to do so would be the concept of gamification. Gamification is the use of ideas or concepts that drive games in non-gaming contexts. Examples of gamification include the incorporation of features like levels, progress bars, and rewards for achieving certain targets in everyday actions or workplace tasks. Gamification can be used to change behavior because it universally appeals to aspects of human nature like our competitive spirit and reward-based thinking. So now that we've covered all the potential ideas we did research on and the areas that Cisco needs to focus on in the future, it leaves us with one big question. Where should Cisco look to begin implementing smart building technology? One outcome of our research was the realization that Cisco should target single tenant buildings during the initial stages of implementation. 
Implementing the technology in single tenant buildings would allow for a faster positive return on investment or ROI. Smart buildings would be of more tangible value for single tenants since the features installed would be based on tenant requests. This is as opposed to multi-tenant buildings where residents may not see the value of some or all of the features. For this reason, it would be easier for Cisco to convey the value of smart building technology to owners of single tenant buildings since they would be able to achieve the positive return on investment in less time than owners of multi-tenant buildings. We've also identified research partnerships with public sector institutions as a strategic place to begin implementation. The public sector is looking to maximize value for its citizens as opposed to profit generation in the private sector. Building of the future technology could be introduced to facilities like schools and hospitals through these research partnerships. The government bodies responsible for these facilities would handle the administration and funding of the partnerships. These partnerships would pave the way to field test the technology and adjust it to ensure maximum user benefit, as well as proving to potential private sector customers that the technology would be of value to their businesses by increasing customer satisfaction.